Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Cross-platform development has almost always been a thing on mobile platforms, just like native has always been a thing. But if we take a look at the options we have to build both iOS and Android apps with one single code base, then two frameworks stand out. KMP or Kotlin Multiplatform, and Flutter. And if you're maybe a native Android developer who now wants to get into cross-platform development, or maybe you're also an iOS developer who's watching here, I'm a native Android developer, I've been developing Android apps for five, six years. But to be honest, cross-platform frameworks have always been quite tempting for me as well. And in this video, I will compare the two most popular and in my opinion, viable cross-platform frameworks we have for mobile apps. So KMP and Flutter, in a lot of different aspects and categories. Those categories are on the one hand code sharing. So how does it really work that we just put our code at one place and we get two apps out of that? Then I will compare the programming language each framework uses. I will compare how the compilation works. So how the shared code is actually compiled and what kind of result we really get out of that compilation for both KMP and Flutter apps. Then I will take a look at how UI rendering works. So how do you really draw UI on the screen? I will compare how it actually works to communicate with the native APIs. So how we implement logic that is really platform specific, like showing a notification, for example. I will also take a look at performance, maturity, so which framework is safer to use at the moment. And then I will make some assumptions about the future. So in which direction I think the cross-platform market will go to. And lastly, I will just share my own opinion about those frameworks and give you a specific recommendation which framework you should learn right now. So let's talk about code sharing. Which platforms can we actually develop for with KMP and with Flutter? And in this regard, both platforms are actually quite similar and quite comparable. Since both these platforms allow us to put our code in one single place, and get executables for multiple platforms out of that. So specifically, those platforms are iOS apps, Android apps, their desktop apps, and even web is supported by both KMP and Flutter. So in this regard, it's a draw here. Next up, talking about the programming language. Well, as the name Kotlin Multiplatform already says, it uses Kotlin, surprise. So we just have our shared logic written in pure Kotlin code, which you can then just take and use for all those different platforms I just mentioned. On the other hand, Flutter uses the programming language. And while I am, of course, a little bit biased here as as a native Android developer who uses Kotlin all day, I can only say the last time I used Dart, which is quite some time ago to be honest, but it wasn't enjoyable. It really reminded me so much of Java and there was not a lot of syntactical sugar, at least not as we know it from Kotlin. And that's also the impression I get when I talk to uh, Flutter devs who have also tried Kotlin. Coming to the next category and that is compilation. So how does the framework or the compiler really take the shared code of the framework and compile it down to something that runs on all these different platforms? And while these frameworks are similar in that regard, there is still some differences. So if we take a look at Kotlin multi-platform, then it really depends on the target we want to compile an app for that decides how the compilation will work. So that means if we have a KMP project that should run on Android, then for Android, the Kotlin compiler will compile the shared Kotlin code just to JVM bytecode, to, to Java virtual machine bytecode. Uh, that is the primary format Android apps are just compiled to, which Android understands, so that is native for Android. On iOS, however, we don't have a JVM, since that just works with the native binaries, so just a bunch of zeros and ones that represents some kind of instructions for the CPU of iOS devices. But here again, the Kotlin compiler will take the shared code and compile it to those native binaries that run on iOS, so it's also a native iOS app. And the same also comes for desktop apps, so here we have the option to actually compile it down to JVM bytecode, since we have the JVM available on desktop, but it's also reasonable to compile it down to native code, which can also be run on a desktop environment. Lastly, if we take a look at web applications, then the Kotlin multi-platform code will really just compile down to JavaScript, the programming language that is really used everywhere in web. So in regards to Kotlin multi-platform, all those platforms really get native applications out of our shared Kotlin code. That's very cool, of course. So the native usually also means a better performance than non-native. If we take a look at Flutter, on the other hand, we also get native apps on all these different platforms. That's something many people don't know, I feel like, because you always hear, okay, KMP apps are actually native, well, Flutter apps are not. And I will also share in a moment why that is actually the case or why people say this, but technically Flutter apps compile to native code on each platform as well. The only difference for Flutter is that it does not compile to JVM bytecode on Android, but rather to machine code directly. But that can also run on Android devices. Let's next compare the UI rendering. So how do we achieve that we put our UI 
UI at one central place and it looks the same on all these different platforms. These points are similar again, but there are still some slight differences. So on Carton Multiplatform, all UI widgets, so all composables, if you're using Compose Multiplatform, that is the assumption I have to make here because otherwise you can't share UI code in uh, Carton Multiplatform. But if you're using Compose Multiplatform, then the entire UI, so the, your entire Jetpack Compose code in the Multiplatform project will be drawn from scratch. So you can think of this as just having a native canvas component on iOS side. And the Compose Multiplatform framework will then figure out, okay, this is our Compose code and this is how it needs to translate into canvas coordinates. So we just draw that on the native canvas in iOS. So the UI components we implement in Compose Multiplatform are not technically native components, but you have the option to make them native components. That is a very unique to Carton Multiplatform. So if we want to use the platform specific components that the, in this case, Apple Developer Kit provides here in Swift UI in that case, we can do that in Carton Multiplatform since it allows us to write platform specific code natively for every single platform. So if we really want those native Apple components, then we just need to implement those in native Apple code in Swift, therefore. With Flutter, on the other hand, drawing the UI works very similar than on Compose Multiplatform, that it will just draw everything uh, that we define in Flutter on a canvas on all platforms. That's fine for sharing, but with Flutter, we don't have the option to actually write native UI components for every single platform individually, at least not in an as straightforward way as we have with KMP. Coming to the next category, and that is how do we communicate with native APIs? So while we can, of course, share a lot of code between all platforms with these two frameworks, there will always be scenarios where specific platforms need specific logic. So imagine you're building a mobile and a desktop app. On desktop apps, the file system, even on Windows environments, works completely differently than on macOS environments, and that is completely differently how it works on Android environments. And if we now want to share some logic regarding the file system, then we somehow need to tell each platform how it works with the file system specifically from that platform. And in KMP, that works with the expect actual mechanism. So in our common code, we can just expect a specific type of class. And then we have actual implementations of that class for every single platform individually. So we say, okay, on desktop, interacting with files works like this. This is the file path for desktop. This is the file path for mobile. Oh, on Android, we actually also need permissions. These kinds of things we can uh, implement very individually for every single platform on KMP. And the big advantage here with KMP is that we can directly interact with the native APIs. So the native APIs would really be those APIs the platform itself provides. So if we think of showing a notification, for example, then there is already a system API in Android that provides functionality for us that we can call in order to see a notification on our Android device. Showing a notification on iOS works differently, but there's also a system API that Apple provides to us. And with KMP, that is really unique about it, we can directly talk to these two system APIs without any bridge layer that does the translation from our Kotlin code to the native code or to, to, the, to the native APIs. On Flutter, that works differently because Flutter can't directly call those native APIs. While Flutter can, of course, somehow interact with the native APIs, otherwise, this will be quite a problem. There is still a bridge layer necessary in Flutter. So these are called platform channels, actually, how, how that works. So the Dart code will just use such a platform channel, so just a, a stream of data that can be used to exchange bits and bytes. And this platform channel then leads to the native APIs. But as you can see, there is a bridge layer. So some kind of channel that needs to interpret the Flutter code and translate that to calls to the native APIs. And for the common functionality you might want to share, I don't know, camera access, recording video, showing notifications, Flutter has all kinds of plugins, also from the community, which you can just use in your shared code. And those plugins were then written in native code for every single platform, so you can use these out of the box. However, with Flutter, you really don't get around having this platform channel, so this intermediate step kind of, which is of course just an extra layer data has to pass, which is less performant than if we just call the native APIs directly like we can do with KMP. Next category is performance. Which framework actually builds the better performing apps? And I have to say, I will really focus on the, let's call it theoretical performance, because in order to truly compare the performance between KMP and Flutter, we would need some kind of real studies that compare the performance of Flutter and KMP apps, where the app is exactly the same in different categories of apps and so on. And I did not find such studies. So all I can say here is, 
that KMP apps, as I said, are pure native apps, just like Flutter apps, but there is not this bridge layer that I talked about. So Kotlin multi-platform apps actually also share the same memory space and call stack as the platform that it's running on. That is not the case on Flutter apps. So on the one hand, as I said, on Flutter apps, we have this bridge layer, which does the translation from the Dart code to the native code or to the native API calls. And Flutter apps are also running in their own kind of isolated environment on the Dart VM, Dart Virtual Machine. So that means they also don't share the same memory space and call stack as the platform that's running on. And this does not make Flutter apps true native apps. So while they compile to native binaries, technically they are still not really treated as native apps. And that's really what people mean when they say KMP brings native apps, while well, Flutter does not. So let's talk about maturity next. According to JetBrains, Kotlin multi-platform is stable. And if something is stable, then it's also considered production ready. And that's also my experience when I've been using that. It's quite stable if we just use Kotlin multi-platform and I rarely run into any weird issues with it. However, we need to take a look at Compose multi-platform individually because Compose multi-platform is really just some kind of add-on to Kotlin multi-platform that allows us to also share UI code between all those different platforms. And Compose multi-platform is not officially stable yet. It is for Android, since Jetpack Compose is a technology that was primarily made for Android. But for the iOS side, for example, it is in beta currently. And also for web platforms, it's even in alpha. So Compose multi-platform still has a path in front of it. And to be honest, if I would have to seriously build a production-ready app with a cross-platform framework, then at this point, I wouldn't feel confident with using Compose multi-platform yet. So I think right now is the perfect time to try it out, to use it in your hobby projects to experiment with it, but I'd still be careful with production apps. Since even if it might look very cool on the first glance, the dangers of such unstable technologies are always that they might lead to issues you don't even think of at first, but at a much later time. So imagine you already built maybe a 10, 15 screen app with Compose multi-platform. Everything was cool until then, but then you start to experience weird performance issues or whatever. And at that point, it's too late. If you then want to switch the technology, you need to rewrite everything, or at least the UI layer in Kotlin multi-platform. So that's why thinking about this from the very beginning on really matters here. So this is honestly a point that I have to give to Flutter at this point. Since Flutter has been around for quite some time, it is stable, it is maintained by Google, and also broadly used and applied for lots of different apps. But if we really compare Kotlin multi-platform, so without Compose, with Flutter here, then I think these are even. And getting to the last category before I want to share my personal opinion and recommendation for you, let's talk about future. Unfortunately, I forgot my crystal ball here, so everything I say here are just my personal assumptions, of course. But maybe you noticed that Google actually announced during Google's yearly event, Google I.O., that Kotlin multi-platform is now an officially supported technology by Google itself. And I think this has been a marker for a very bright future of Kotlin multi-platform. And you might not think, okay, but Flutter is actually owned by Google and KMP is only supported by Google. How does it make that better that Google supports Kotlin multi-platform than that it owns Flutter? I personally think the fact that Google actually decides to officially support a technology they don't own because Kotlin multi-platform is owned by JetBrains, but still Google decided to officially support it even though they have their own technology that does exactly the same or that actually solves the same type of problem at least. The fact that they decided to do so could show that Google sees more future in Kotlin multi-platform than in Flutter, because why else would they support a technology they don't even own? And this is, of course, just conspiracy time. I could be very wrong with that assumption. But I still find that very interesting. That's like... Samsung buying Apple stocks. Why would they do that if they have their own stocks? And one more reason why I really believe that Kotlin Multiplatform will have a very bright future is that the company behind it, JetBrains, really sees it as their baby. If you follow them on social media and how they promote it, you really notice that they, they do everything in their power to make Kotlin Multiplatform succeed and a viable technology. However, if we take a look at Flutter at the present moment, then yes, that is officially maintained by Google. It also belongs to Google. It's a Google product. But the past has shown that Google is actually not very afraid of suddenly stopping support for products they are owning. And I'm not saying that this will happen to Flutter soon. No, I, I don't think that. But I am saying that I I would trust Google much more to abandon Flutter than I would trust JetBrains to abandon KMP. Because I don't see Flutter as Google's baby while I see KMP as JetBrains' baby. And in the end, Google is just such a giant company that if Flutter would be gone, Google would be at exactly the same position as it is right now. While I think if JetBrains would suddenly lose KMP for whatever reason, 
that would really hurt their reputation. Of course, JetBrains still has some other awesome products like all those cool IDEs, but I see Kotlin multi-platform as one of JetBrains core products. So what is now my personal opinion? What do I recommend you to do right now? Or if you want to learn cross-platform, which technology should you really pick? And my opinion here is really clear. If you are a native Android developer and you know Kotlin, then jumping into KMP is just a no-brainer from my side because you really already know most of what you need for KMP because in the end, you know the programming language, you know many concepts that are used in Kotlin multi-platform projects, especially with the just announced Google support, which will um, add all those Jetpack libraries we already know from Android, also for KMP. So all that will not be new to you. The only thing you really need to learn is how you implement platform-specific code. So the learning curve is not steep at all. However, that also doesn't mean that I think Flutter will go anywhere anytime soon. I personally think both technologies will just coexist. I personally am also convinced that there won't be just that one single way in future of building mobile apps. People have been saying that for decades, that a specific technology will take over, all other jobs will be lost. I don't believe in that. I think native will still exist. There will be native iOS developers, native Android developers. There will be cross-platform developers with Flutter. There will be cross-platform developers with KMP. And all those will be viable technologies that are viable for a specific set of people, specific set of goals, and specific set of requirements. And especially if we also take a look at the iOS side, if we take a look at native iOS developers, I have the feeling that they often just live completely in their own world and that technologies like Kotlin multi-platform completely go past them. So if you want a general recommendation, I would say go KMP. If you are already building Flutter apps and you enjoy that, then this is not a reason to switch from that just because KMP is now supported by Google. I don't believe that this is the end of Flutter. However, I still believe that KMP has a very bright future. And that's also why you will see much more Kotlin multi-platform and Compose multi-platform tutorials in future on my channel. And if you want to learn how you can build a full cross platform app in Kotlin multi-platform with a native UI, check my course down below. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.